Hey, what's up guys? Lewis here with Shutterstock Tutorials and today we're going to be exploring the differences between recording audio directly into your camera via a microphone and into an external recorder. Okay, so let's say that you started content creation. Uh, it's been a new hobby that you invested into in 2020. Now you want to take things more seriously. Uh, and you've come to the conclusion that the onboard audio on your camera is a load of rubbish. And guys, outside of filming your dog at the local park, you don't never really want to be using the onboard microphone. Uh, that's more based for like a scratch track so you can later sync up better audio uh, without the use of a clapper board. Uh, but now you've done a little bit of research and you've come to two distinctive paths. Either buying an, a microphone to place onto your camera and feed directly into your camera, or to buy an external recorder to then have the microphone feed into the external recorder and create an independent audio track. Let's have a look at the pros and cons between both. First, let's have a look at the camera. For consumer cameras, onboard audio wasn't all that great at the start of the 2010s, and while it's got better, there are still some detriments to using onboard audio. A professional cinema camera like the C300 Mark III would be at the very top of having onboard audio tools, whereas something like the 5D Mark IV would be at the very bottom. The first benefit of recording your sound straight into the camera is that it removes the tedious task of syncing separate audio and video files. Now, if you're doing something like a home video tutorial, having separate video and audio and syncing them in post is just one step too many. Having both great sound and video pulled from a single memory card is incredibly convenient. However, that sound file is only ever likely to have one audio track, as most consumer cameras will only have the one mic input. On the topic of inputs, let's talk about cables. There's nothing worse than having a trail of cables when you're creating content. However, by feeding a mic directly into the camera and placing the mic on top of the camera, you can swap the line of trailing XLRs for a short cable and keep the shoot stress-free. However, if you intend on having someone else operate the microphone via a boom pole, say, you'll end up in a tethered situation. So you'll not only have those cables sprawling about, but you'll have to be in coordination with another person. One component that is usually a huge detriment in recording straight to the camera is the audio monitoring setup. Simply, tools built for video are 90% of the time not designed to monitor and adjust audio live. Even on a camera as grand as the C300 Mark III, it's not practical to adjust levels on the fly, and you'd either have to resort to the automated function or gauge the median dB before the scene starts shooting. And it's even worse when using something like the 5D, having to jump through several menus to adjust the audio would be like having to go through four pages of operations just to change the shutter speed. A lot of the time, lower priced cameras will only really have the core fundamentals of audio features. So uh, the audio might not be balanced. The camera may not support phantom power. This is where uh, the microphone needs to be powered uh, through the camera or through the a field recorder instead of having its own independent uh, battery power. Uh, and newer models, they may have some features such as turn, being able to turn on a low pass filter or like a decent preamp, uh, but really it's not gonna have a preamp as great as that as uh, an independent field recorder. So let's have a look. The first thing you're going to notice is the abundance of inputs that you have available. If you've jumped from shooting content at home to a corporate shoot where there's three people speaking and you need three inputs, you have that available. And most importantly, you will also be able to monitor and adjust each input individually and at the same time. For the most part, field recorders will have knobs that allow you to adjust the gain while recording. And this is pivotal when something loud is happening or the volume of the talent is increasing. Cameras will typically only have one audio recording option or perhaps more advanced cameras you can change from 16-bit to 24-bit. But on field mixers, like switching between a variety of camera codecs, you'll be able to switch through a variety of different audio formats from compressed MP3 to uncompressed WAV with a selection of different data rates. Overall, you will also find the user interface and features very accommodating to recording and manipulating audio rather than it being a small blip within your camera's LCD. Uh, one of the more prominent aspects of owning a field recorder is that it houses a better preamp than you're going to find in your low budget DSLR. Now, a preamp converts weak electronic signal into an output signal that's going to be noise tolerant. So it has one job. It's 
it's going to increase clear audio gain. With a DSLR, if you turn up the gain, if your audio, if your subject is quite far away and the signal is low, in doing so, it's going to bring up the noise floor, resulting in that hissing sound that you might hear. With a preamp, it's going to keep that noise floor low, resulting in clearer audio. Now, of course, let's talk about an obvious element. A field recorder will allow you or a separate person to record and possibly place the microphone in a completely different area than the camera. So there's no tethering, which in turn will result in a more flexible shoot. And additionally, having a field mixer is great to have for some solo sound recording, perhaps for some sound effects or to record at home at the desk without needing to turn the camera on. Conversely, having a separate device to control sound requires double the work if you're creating content by yourself. There are now two devices you need to start, two devices you need to stop, two media cards you need to take care of, and now two devices that require separate power. Likewise, you also have to remember it will be an additional item that requires some form of support when you're out. You wouldn't want just to place it on the camera and fastened, so you may have to invest in an additional gear bag or tripod. It should also be noted that you could mix best of the both worlds by feeding your external recorder into your camera, so you now have the better audio attached to the single video clip. Okay, let's debrief. Having a microphone fed into a camera is gonna be for quick and easy shoots, minimal cable setup, uh, having the audio attached to your video file, no post work on syncing that up. However, uh, most of the times if you're working with an inexpensive camera, you're only gonna have the one mic port. You're not gonna have a wide variety of audio formats to record to. Uh, and depending on your camera's internals, even if you have an expensive microphone, it might result in iffy audio. Field recorders, for the very least, are gonna have two microphone inputs, allowing you to capture uh, two different microphones if needed for your project. They're gonna have far greater audio monitoring and adjusting parameters. And just all around, guys, uh, the quality for the most part for more expensive field mixers and field recorders, is they're gonna excel in comparison to your onboard camera kit. However, it will require additional media, additional power. Uh, if your talent is off gallivanting uh, and your camera is moving the other way, you're gonna need someone else to operate and uh, record the audio. And it's gonna be an additional expense, around about 500 to $1,000 for a decent field recorder. I'm not gonna give you this information and tell you guys to make up your own mind. Uh, I would say that I've very much on the side of using an external field recorder. Um, if you've seen the previous tutorials from up in the mountains or at the beach, uh, it's always very windy. Evident as to what a grad end is. Half is clear glass or clear resin and the other half is... And um, the audio is nice and crispy because of my audio setup. So I've been Lewis with Shutterstock Tutorials and I will catch you guys next time.